culture. Africa is too blessed. Yeah. Africans don't need to be crossing the Mediterranean Sea to be going to Europe for 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 no reason. Those things are not nice. You understand? There are things they need to. In fact, they need to develop Africa in. When they develop Africa nicely, yeah. Yeah, nobody will be traveling anywhere. Yeah. We can be in Africa and do all our things here. Africa got everything that it takes, you understand, yeah. to be developed. You know, you'll be in Africa if you got a nice job. You got, there are too many people inventing things in Africa. Yeah. Too many we can't count. On no account, anybody is supposed to be looking for American visa, UK visa, Spanish visa or British visa or whatever. We don't need those things. We can be in Africa and survive in Africa, I'm telling you. All we need is just unity in Africa and aside that, good leaders, good people to run Africa. You understand? Any country in Africa, if they are producing anything there, they should force those people to patronize them. You understand? If your country is producing cars, all the government cars are supposed to be used by those, those people there, you know? We finally arrived in Devon. I think it's my first time in Devon. I've been to South Africa so many times. Everyone keeps on telling me that if you go to South Africa, you never go to Devon, which means you've never been to South Africa. And when I got in here, I had a catastrophic news. This region hasn't seen rain like this in more than 60 years. 448 people are dead, with dozens still missing. Recovery workers with dogs searching for bodies. 40,000 South Africans now displaced, more than 4,000 homes destroyed. And as African, on behalf of all Africans, we sympathize with the people of South Africa, especially the family that lost their loved ones. We have the fun. We dig them up. Like I've always been preaching, one Africa. I believe that each and every African needs to be a brother's keeper. So coming to Durban, finding out what happened, I couldn't just sit, eat, and enjoy the city of Durban without paying a visit to the people that lost their family members and people who also lost their homes. So where, where do you live now? I live in Montopia. The neighbors. neighbors. You, you don't have a place to stay now. Sorry? You don't have a place to stay for your own. Literally, they became homeless. So I visited where they stay, and we found out that they need foodstuffs. So myself and my brother Tayo went to do shopping for them, and it was the most beautiful thing I've ever done. Very long time. Thank you, guys. You all are wondering why I came to Devon this time. I came here because of Africa travel in Daba. which is the biggest tourism festival in the entire of Africa. During the opening of the festival, one of the speeches that really touched my heart was this one. We as Africans are more than what we have been depicted as. We are more than just turning the Mediterranean into a tomb. We are more than turning the sands of the Sahara Desert red with the conflict in the Sahel. We are more than the conflict that is raging in the Kivus in Eastern Congo. We are more than what is happening in Cabo Delgado. We are more than the challenges in Eswatini and Lesotho. We are much more than that. And we are at our best 
when we do something like this together. Saying Goma, Goma stressed stress me, but I love it. Il dit que Goma l'a stressé. I'm definitely coming back to Goma. Can you say why organizing such events is important for a country? I mean, it makes everything comes to the country back again. Thank you. You know, it boosts the <laughs> tourism, and also, you know, tourism boosts the economy. Yes. So I think Congo itself got a lot, but they need to do well in terms of attracting people. Into what the am I, the son of Africa? I always have to say that too. <laughs> so I guess I need to show you that Devon is not what you think. You know, somebody wants to visit Devon for the first time and he doesn't know anything about Devon. What are you going to tell us about Devon? Listen, Devon is beautiful, sunny, gorgeous people. Friendly people, lovely climate, and it's just a friendly city. And it's that, that I feel like it's the core of KZN, the core of South Africa. It's coastal land, of course, but the ocean here. Well, what is KZN? KZN stands for like KwaZulu Natal. So it's like the Zulus are born and bred here in KZN. I know you all are impressed and some of you are even surprised by the beauty of Durban. Listen, I know most of you when you hear South Africa, there are only two cities that comes into your mind which is Cape Town and Johannesburg. But I just want to tell you that there is more to South Africa. Durban really surprised me. Listen, I want to tell you this. Let's do this for South Africans. A big round of applause for South Africans because I feel like in South Africa, they've invested so much in infrastructures, especially road connectivity within the country. about the city of Deba. After being here for the first time, I would say that this city is a world-class city. I mean, a world-class city have what? World-class infrastructures, which means that this city can compete with any city in the world. I mean, what makes me say that? When you come to Deban, they got a world-class stadium. that really shocked me don't tell anybody yeah in the city of Durban is the apartment that people live in I mean these apartments are world-class apartment listen I've seen so many apartments in so many countries that I've been to but this was so unique what makes it unique the beautiful waterfront apartment. I mean, sometimes I tell you that you're not just buying a building, but you buy its environment. The environment was filled with water. The environment were filled with trees. Oh my goodness. I mean, if you live in a place like that, trust me, you will live longer. And I love the fact that in Devon, they make the life of the people easier. When your apartment is here, there is a world-class mall close to you. How cool is that? I think it's time for me to buy an apartment in Denver because I want to live longer. Let me blow your mind about the city of Denver. It's so well developed, especially the coastline. This is what I think my country can learn from. Don't tell me that what you're seeing is not beautiful. Or don't tell me that what you're seeing, you're not super impressed. We've got all the coastline, but what are we doing to the coastline? I think a country that I also saw that they developed their coastline was Namibia. So now, I guess South Africa and Namibia would definitely be one of my favorite places to be. Thank you. You don't 
don't think I'm overreacting? Yeah, I'm not overreacting. I was just saying it like some days back. You know, the way the, the planning is done here, it's like everybody has access to the beach. First of all, in Lagos, we don't even have a single public beach. But here, they have different public beaches. I just woke up from where I was today, my apartment. I walked down to the beach, saw a lot of people jogging. You know, they even had like a, like a boulevard, a walkway where people could just walk and jog. And, you know, if you're living in a place like that, living in a city like this and having access to this kind of things, your lifespan will be longer because you are getting to enjoy nature. <laughs> also, another very interesting fact to note is that at the coastline, there's a way they plan the buildings. If you see all the buildings, you can see that no building is blocking another building. Each yeah. building has a view. So if you're building at the, at, the, at the front of the beach, the next person building behind you has to build higher. And then it's just higher, higher. So everybody gets a view of, of, of the beach, which is really nice. In Lagos, you know, you don't, you don't build like that. <laughs> Everyone just blocks I mean, it. he's saying in Lagos, you don't build like that. But I also tell you that you don't build like that in Accra. It's my first day out here in the streets of Durban and I must confess, I'm super impressed on how organized this city is. Enough of me being too serious with you guys, man. Durban is a whole vibe. are going to be mad for me saying this but i just want to tell you guys fun fact of what i've seen in Devon. listen in this city if you have big bomb bomb i don't think it's gonna be a biggest flex because from where i'm coming from and some of the countries that i've been to people with big bomb bomb become celebrities but here in Devon, i'll say that 99.9 percent .9 of the people that i'm seeing i mean the women in here got it God bless South Africa, God bless Devon, God bless Africa. Thank you. Apart from the city being so modernized, I feel like it's also diversified. Because when I got in here, I realized that the people living in here are a mixture of black people, white people, and Indians. I mean, to the extent that I went to a place and I realized that even Mahatma Gandhi bought a hundred acres of land in here and this is where he built his house. Richard, but Muslim merchant. And then Gandhi came face to face with apartheid in this country. He fought against racism, division, poverty and the plight of the Indians. In 1903, the land was advertised, it cost around a thousand pounds. And then Gandhi decided to purchase that land. And then he built that White House and named that house Sarvodaya, the good of all. Now you know, so I guess I need to educate you about the history of the city of Durban. Before I tell you more about Durban, have you liked the video? It's very important. Click on the like button. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. Thank you. Welcome to the city of Deben. Deben is a, a city, a warmest city and a place to be. Deben was founded in early 1820s by the British um, settlers whom they formed up the city because they wanted um, to make sure that the economy of the harbour stays within the city. The first person to become um, the city mayor was Sir Benjamin Diebe and also one of the planner or the city planner of the city. That's why even now we are stuck with the name Diebe. It's come from his surname Diebe. Then the first, first people who occupied the area before it was also known as the city, it was the Lalapais and the Lutuli clan. Then the Lutuli clan were approached by the Portuguese who landed here in 1492. Then the Portuguese, when they were here, they discovered the harbor. They are the ones who discovered the, the harbor by the person who was a navigator, a ship navigator, Vasco da Gama. 
then they stayed here. It was the 25th of December, of which is known as Christmas. When they laid it here, they said it's Natal. That's why even now the, province, the entire province is called KwaZulu Natal. It's specifically because of the name that they, 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 they uttered first when they, they decided to rest here. History time is over and travel to ASA told me that Maya, enough of the history class, it's time to have fun. This is gonna be so cool. I mean, I'm not a big fan of said things, but because of traveling, anywhere I go to, I need to break that virginity. You know, I need to try doing things for the first time. You know, I went to Congo, they gave me a horse and I'm like, I would never ride it. I was in Ghana, they gave me a horse and I was like, I would never ride it, bro. Jeez, man! God, this vlog is gonna be good, man. I'm so excited about this. This is so cool. Riding a horse for the first time in Devon City. And so cool. for a very long time. Can you believe it? I'm right inside Devon City and I'm riding a bike with no license. Hey, I mean, you don't need a license to ride a bike, but it feels so cool riding bicycle along the Blue Lagoon of Devon. And you know what? This place is super organized to the extent that there are bicycle lanes, people also jog in here in the morning and in the evening. And when you come very late in the night, you see people frying meat right over there, which is incredible. It's like South Africa. One thing I love about this place is that it's not just Johannesburg, it's not just Pretoria, it's not just like Cape Town. Wherever you go in South Africa, it's super, super, super organized. And that makes me fall in love with this country. And I hope that the rest of Africa will learn from this in terms of how to organize a city. Oh my goodness. You know what? Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I came to Deban, everyone was telling me that you cannot go to Deban without walking through the street of Point. <laughs> and I'm like, it doesn't look like a point though, but they call this place Point. Do you guys know why they call this place Point? I don't know. You know? <laughs> we don't know, we don't, we <laughs> don't know. Well, but, 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 there's a secret about this there, there, There's a secret about point, point, man. Yeah. But, but, but what, what is so special about Point, man? Uh, it's, it's just like, um, it's, it's a nice place. Yeah. yeah. It's the safest place for foreigners, yeah. I think, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they laughing, eh? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I, I think it's because it's the safest place for foreigners. Why is this the safest place for foreigners? Yeah, and then if you need any African food, any African things, you, you can, can get everything here. It's just like, like that. It's just like uh, uh, a happening city around here, like in the sense of a lot of students, yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah like everything is, is, a, is, a, is a busy town. And they're going to snatch your phone from you. <laughs> You know, so they, they take your phone from you, yeah. Wow. No idea. We know they follow them. They can take your phone. Yeah. So which means it's not that safe to walk through. Yeah. It's just, it's just like um, ghetto. Like a ghetto. Yeah. Lagos oh, ghetto. It's like a ghetto. Oh, Nima. But, but, but looking at it now, it's just like everybody's just doing their own thing. It's Everybody. like it's like a community. That's how I actually see it. Everybody's minding their business. Always. Yeah. Even if you're getting robbed, yeah, people is minding their business. Yeah, they are not going to help you. It's not their business. So. No one is going to help you. <laughs> even, even if you're in Nigeria and you're for No, we're going to fight for you. Yeah. <laughs> that one is different. <laughs> and I can see booty too. Hey! Oh, booty. Oh, I, 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 I asked for booty. It's everywhere in South Africa, man. <laughs> Oh 
my goodness man so this is super crazy man i don't even know what to say so This is super crazy man so today is actually the last day in Deban I was left because Steven was busy um, washing his clothes knowing that we are flying out today so I had to step out of the car in order to make sure that he finishes whatever he's doing so that we go together but I kept on waiting and waiting not knowing he's actually washing his clothes I felt mad and I left and um, I had to take an Uber and I realized that I just have just only dollars in my pocket and I was looking for a place to change money. Excuse me. You have to change for this. And I met this gentleman. I'm like, please, can you help me change money? He's like, what am I? And I'm like, come on. <laughs> Not this time around, man. Because yeah. I mean, uh, and he gave me, so listen, I, he gave me the money to go and pay. And then I went there. The driver too said like, hey, just give me 100 and take the 100 back. Yeah. So I want I'm bringing back your hundred. No, come on. This is thank you, man. Yo, I just want to tell you guys that like yo, South Africans are giving me a different vibe this time around. There's so much there's so cool people in here man. Yeah. Like who yeah. are you man? Yeah man, my name is Ezekiel Mabote. I live here in South Africa. I was born in Mozambique. Okay. So I've been here for past 25 years that's where i make my living wow and what do you do this is what i do this is all my beautiful artwork wow this is all all that you see it's made by me made by you i am the artist behind you can see the signature is the same name it's one name ezekiel mavote and uh, i'm here as mavote arts Art. So when you come to this international airport what's the name kinshaka kinshaka international, international airport just come find my my bote art and if you also want to reach out to him on instagram this is his instagram handle facebook handle twitter handle and that's the phone number see i'm late oh, and i need to catch oh, up with a flight oh, i want to say thank I'm, you so much no thank you man you made my day it's so early in the morning I'm, i so appreciate i knew that you were in south africa i followed you i'm like wow when am I gonna see this guy by any means? <laughs> yeah. So, yo, man. Hey, it was meant to happen, man. Yeah. Your message to Africans, man. Your message cool, to Africans. Uh, stay strong, believe in yourself, work hard, and be positive. It's possible. Thank you so much for talking to me, man.